This is a micro camper that we built in just 5 weeks and completely went over budget. So I started by assembling a 4x8 prefabricated trailer, then installed the brackets that hold the leaf springs in place, installed the leaf springs, then set the axle on top of them and used the U-bolts that the kits came with to screw it together. And while I have the trailer upside down, I picked up 4 6500 pound scissor jacks on Amazon because I want to install one on each corner of the camper to make sure it's super stable. But to install the jacks onto the trailer, I had to add an extra bracket, so I cut out a piece of squared metal tubing and drilled some holes in it. I then wiped it down with alcohol and sprayed three layers of Rust-Oleum spray paint to make sure it doesn't get rusty. And while the paint dried, I installed the wheels temporarily because we plan on getting bigger ones that can handle tougher terrains and are rated for a higher speed. But now that the paint is dry, I installed the brackets onto the trailer using lock nuts, bolts, washers, and even Loctite to make sure that the jacks don't rattle off while you're on the interstate. And I know that adding jacks to each corner is complete overkill, but I plan on selling this camper and I wanted to have as many cool options as possible. Now that the entire trailer is put together, it's time to install the subfloor. So we cut out some half inch plywood and set it on top of the trailer. And since the trailer bolts protrude out over the frame, I marked them onto the plywood then drilled holes so the plywood can sit nice and flat. We then pulled the pieces back outside, flipped them upside down, and painted them with Gildan exterior paint. And I applied two thick layers to try and preserve the subfloor for as long as possible. Once the subfloor finished drying, we ran a bead of liquid nails around the entire trailer frame. Then set the pieces on top of the trailer and secured them in using exterior self-tapping screws. Then cut out some 1x4 inch wooden slats that will work as dividers so we can insulate the subfloor. And to insulate the subfloor we're using half inch foam insulation that has an R value of 3.2 and we're basically just cutting them to size and fitting them in between the wooden slats that we originally installed onto the subfloor. We're then going to finish it off with another sheet of half inch plywood and if you're enjoying our content see about subscribing to our channel because it really helps us continue to make videos like this for you guys. We finished screwing the final piece of plywood into the wooden slats then did a little dance on top of the trailer and I'm really surprised of how sturdy it is so far. I cut out a 3 quarter inch groove into a pressure treated 2x4, then drilled some holes and secured it onto the trailer frame using nuts and bolts. This way the trailer walls will be able to be set into the grooves, allowing them to rest on top of the 2x4 instead of just screwing it into the side of the trailer. The next step was to install the walls, so we drew the design that we wanted onto a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood and carefully cut it out. And this part was scary as hell because we had to make sure that both pieces would be perfectly symmetrical because this would literally be the outside design of this camper. But after about two and a half hours of measuring and cutting, we were pretty happy with the way they came out, so we decided to install them onto the trailer. We set them into the grooves that we made earlier, then screwed them into a piece of scrap wood to hold them up while we cut out the piece that will separate the back from the front area. We cut the wall to size, then screwed a bunch of pocket holes into it so it can screw into the walls and the floor. We then cut out the front part of the wall and glued and screwed it into place. The inside of this camper will be 5 feet wide and 6 foot 4 inches long which should be enough to sleep most people, unless you're Shaq or some type of giant. But the next step was to install a bunch of slats onto the walls so we can install some insulation. So we cut them to size and screwed them onto the walls and the first 5 screws went right through the trailer so we had to stop and go get some smaller screws but it all worked out in the end. I then measured out a bunch of 6 inch gaps where all the support beams for the ceiling will go and we're using 2x2 two two inch beams and screwing them in from the outside using pocket hole screws so when the trailer is all said and done you won't be able to see the holes at all. We then grabbed another piece of quarter inch plywood and painted it black before installing it onto the ceiling. And before you judge the color, you'll see why it'll all make sense in the end. It's 
crazy how sturdy this camper got after installing the cross beams and ceiling. This thing will be rock solid after we finish putting the exterior walls and fiberglassing it. After adding the insulation, we measured and carefully cut out the interior walls. And we're using quarter inch plywood that has a really nice finish to it. So it shouldn't need too much sanding when we're all done, but we do plan on painting it. We're building a tiny home micro camper from scratch. So we started the day by measuring and cutting out the hole for the max air fan. I then used 2 by 2 inch wooden beams to add some extra support before drilling the holes for our LED puck lights. We then ran the 12 volt wires through the ceiling and into the wall for the light switch. It was then time to install the ceiling, so we picked up 1 by 2 inch pine slats and cut them into half inch slats to make them thinner so the inside of the camper will have more headroom. We then stained them and let them dry for a couple of hours before installing them onto the camper ceiling. We used wood glue and a nail gun to install them and a 1 inch spacer in between each piece. Once we finished installing the ceiling, we went ahead and drilled the rest of the puck light holes from the inside, then clipped them in, leaving the exposed wire in the ceiling. We then got on top of the roof and connected all the LED lights together using my crimper. We ended up adding six of these puck lights, and we're going to add another LED strip underneath one of the cabinets to make it nice and bright on the inside. We then tested the lights to make sure they work, and just like that, we have light. We then finished running the rest of the wire through the ceiling before installing the insulation. And for the insulation, we're using half inch R max that has an R value of 3.2. And we're laying the insulation on top of the wires to make sure they stay nice and cool while the camper is in the sun. We then finished installing the ceiling on the back side of the camper, then ran the wires through and repeated the same process with the insulation. The next step is to build the overhead cabinet that will go in the back part of the camper. So we ripped down a few pieces of 3 quarter inch plywood, drilled some pocket holes, then started to assemble the cabinet. And I don't typically consider myself a professional at building cabinets, but over the years I've learned that using 3 quarter inch plywood is the best type of material to use just because it makes it nice and structural. But this shit can get expensive, so measure twice, cut once. This is my first time making inlay cabinets like this, and I don't have a CNC machine to make them look nice and perfect. So I did the best with what I have and carefully traced them, then cut them out with my jigsaw. We then screwed it together before installing it onto the back side of the camper. And I'm happy to say they fit nice and snug, but we then ran the wires through the bottom corner and decided to continue the slatted ceiling onto the back side of the camper, then measured and drilled three more holes for the LED lights, popped them into place, then wired them up and made sure they work. Then it was time to install the vinyl floor onto the back side of the camper. We then laid out some subfloor adhesive from Loctite, then spread an even layer across the entire floor and rolled the floor on that we previously cut to size. We let the floor dry for 24 hours, then started to install the electrical system. And for the power bank, we're using two 200 amp hour lithium batteries from Lee Time, which we're connecting in parallel to make a total of 400 amp hours of 12 volt energy. We used two gauge wire to run from the positive side of the battery to the shutoff switch, then connected the shutoff switch to a bus bar. The inverter, fuse panel, and solar controller will all be hooked up to the bus bar, and we'll add a breaker between them for protection. We then ran all of our 12 volt wires from our LED lights, water pump, and switches to the fuse panel. And I picked up this wire track to help organize all the 12 volt wires because I don't want them looking like a mess. I then connected each individual 12 volt wire to the fuse panel and I'll come back later on to label them. Once I finished connecting all the wires to the fuse panel, I installed all the fuses. I then had to connect the battery monitor that we also got from Lee Time, so we installed the shunt that it came with and connected it to the negative side of the battery. Then connected the other end of the shunt to the bus bar. And I wasn't able to connect the LED screen to the shunt because I had to finish building cabinets that the LED screen will go into. So I did some measuring and ripped down a bunch of pieces of 3 quarter inch plywood and basically repeated the same process as the other cabinets that we built earlier in the video.
I then routed out a bunch of vent holes for the fridge, which took a lot longer than it was supposed to, but I got it done. I then sanded the crap out of it using 220 grit sandpaper before drilling pocket holes in the back side of it. The next step was to screw it together and cross our fingers hoping that it'll fit into the camper nice and snug. We then screwed it into place using pocket hole screws, but the next step was to install the 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter that we got from Lead Time. And the reason we're using Lead Time products for this electrical build is because they make high quality components at a reasonable price. We connected the inverter to a breaker and the breaker to the bus bar. Then ran the negative wire from the inverter to the negative bus bar. Made sure everything was nice and tight, then turned the inverter on to make sure it works. The next step was to run the 120 volt wire to the breaker box. We used a 20 amp breaker and connected all the wires using waggle lever nuts, then plugged the breaker into the box before connecting it to the inverter, made sure it worked, and while I was doing all this electrical, Hope was on the other side, prepping the walls to get painted. She added wood putty to all the screw holes, then sanded the crap out of all the walls to make sure they were nice and smooth. She then primed all the walls using Kills Primer, let it dry for about an hour, then painted all the other walls using some type of paint she picked out that I don't know the name of, but I absolutely love the way it's turning out. We called it a night there to let the paint dry, but got right back to work the next morning to install the roof. We carefully measured and cut a piece of quarter inch plywood, then screwed it into all the cross beams, making sure the screws sink into the plywood so we can wood putty over them before adding the fiberglass so it'll be nice and smooth. We then cut out the other piece, making it so there's only one seam in the entire roof, then ran the solar wires through the plywood before screwing it in. The next step was to install the solar wires to the solar controller. So we stripped the wires and crimped ferrules onto the ends of them, then connected them to the solar controller. We're installing a 200 watt solar panel into this camper, so we're using a 60 amp MPPT solar controller from lead time. And I know it's a little bit of overkill, but we did this on purpose so whoever buys the camper has the option to add another solar panel in the future. But once we finished wiring it up, it was time to lay the rest of the vinyl floor on the front side of the camper. So we measured and cut it to size, then laid out some more subfloor Loctite adhesive and spread it out. We only covered half the subfloor with adhesive, then laid the vinyl floor over it, then covered the other side with adhesive and laid the vinyl floor over that. But the next step was to finally install the front wall, so we screwed in some 2x2 inch beams for support. I then ran a bead of caulking in between the beam and the floor just to make sure everything's nice and sealed, then slid a piece of the front wall onto the inside part of the beams and screwed it into place. But the next step was to install the bottom part of the front cabinet. You'll find out why later on in the video. We then finished installing the support beams and drilled holes in them so we can run the wires through. We finished installing the rest of the interior walls, then measured and cut a hole for our outlet. This will be the only 120 volt outlet that we're installing in the front part of this camper, which will run the air conditioner and allow you to plug something else into the other side. We then covered the remaining part of the camper with insulation, then covered the rest of it up using quarter inch plywood. And just like that, the camper's completely covered and it's officially time to sand and router the entire camper to make it as smooth as possible. We spent half the day sanding and used some of the epoxy resin to make some wood. And we're using slow hardening epoxy from Toto Boat with a 5 to 1 ring, then adding sawdust until we get the consistency of something almost like peanut butter. I then put it in a bag and piped it onto all the cracks and edges of the camper, almost like frosting a cake, which will completely seal and smooth out all the edges of this camper before I add the fiberglass, which will almost ensure that this camper will never leak. I then drilled the holes for the EcoFlow air conditioner slash heater before fiberglassing. So it's officially the next day and the, the filler seemed to have dried up really nice. So now we're gonna sand the entire thing to get it nice and smooth before adding our sheets of fiberglass. Once we finished sanding, I wiped down the camper and applied a layer of epoxy directly onto the plywood, 
and let it sit for about 10 minutes so it can absorb some of the resin before adding the fiberglass cloth. We then added another layer of resin on top of the cloth and repeated the same process until the entire camper was covered. So we finished fiberglassing and let it sit overnight and it seems to have took onto the plywood really well. Now we're going to do another layer, let it sit outside all day and bake in the sun and then tomorrow we'll check it out and possibly sand it. If not, we'll wait another 24 hours uh, to get it all sanded up and then finally paint it. While the second layer of epoxy dried, Hope went to town in the back of the camper painting all the cabinets. And while she did that, I picked up a few pieces of pine to start making the countertop. I then cut them to size and ran them to the joiner to make them as flat as possible before gluing them together and letting them sit overnight. The next day, I measured and cut out a hole for the sink, and also cut out the door that'll open and close so you can access the 12 volt fridge. I then gave the entire countertop a light sanding with 220 grit sandpaper before staining it. And for it to open and close, I simply installed a piano hinge, screwed it in, then brought it over to the camper to make sure it would fit before installing and wiring up the water pump. And this is a 2.5 gallon per minute water pump, which is super efficient and runs off of 12 volts, so it shouldn't pull much power. And I use lever nuts to connect the negative and the positive, which I love because you can replace the water pump and not have to cut any wires. But the next step was to install the trim piece that'll hold the battery monitor and the 120 volt outlet. It's now the next day and I had to start building the side doors because I've been procrastinating the crap out of this because I really have no idea how to do it because I've never done it before. And after doing some research, I realized that not many people who build campers build their own doors because they don't only need to open and close, they also can't leak when it rains and they need to look good. Except that I also decided to add windows to the equation just to complicate things a little more. And even though all the odds were against me, I went ahead and built the door anyways just to prove to myself that I can build anything I put my mind to. And then I cut out the hole for the door lock. I measured and cut out grooves for the stainless steel hinges and I installed three hinges on each door to make sure they would be sturdy so this camper can last as long as possible. So it's 7 p.m. and it's starting to get dark. We've been working on these doors all day long and we finally got one on to test fit it to see how it works before we fiberglass it. And we're really happy at the way that they're turning out. The window opens and closes really nice. It's got a lock and all that good stuff. So now we're gonna take them off and fiberglass them. I rolled on a layer of Total Bolt epoxy onto the bare plywood, then laid the cloth sheets on top and let them soak in then added some more resin on top of it and let it sit overnight. And while the door is cured, it was time to install the EcoFlow AC and heater. So I started by building the cabinet that the Wave 2 would sit inside of. This EcoFlow is a battery powered air conditioner and heater in one with 5,100 BTUs of cooling and 6,100 BTUs of heating. And it can be completely controlled with an easy to use app. And there's just something about this AC that feels super high quality, which is why I decided to install it into this camper build. It almost immediately starts blowing out cold air and can last up to 8 hours on a single charge. 
If you guys want one, I'm going to link them in the description below with the discount code. Once we finished installing the EcoFlow, it was officially time to build the back door. So we measured and cut out a bunch of pieces of 3 quarter inch plywood that will work as a frame for the back door. We then used 2x2s two and screwed them into the pieces of plywood to make a frame, then temporarily installed the frame onto the camper to make sure it would open and close properly. The next step was to cut out a few pieces of quarter inch plywood and screw them into the frame. I then sanded and filled all the cracks with the epoxy wood filler that I made earlier in the video, let it sit overnight, then mix some more of the epoxy resin so I can fiberglass the back door. I let the fiberglass cure for about 3 days, then picked up one of these white jumpsuits and a really good mask because it was officially time to sand the camper and fiberglass is something you don't want on your skin or anywhere near your lungs. I used 60 grit sandpaper to sand the entire camper and it was a total pain in the ass but it'll be completely worth it in the end. So I got the entire camper sanded really nice and masked up. Now I'm going to paint the entire exterior with this Raptor liner. It should give the exterior of this camper a nice rugged feel. So hopefully it comes out really nice. This was really simple to do. I basically just mixed part A with part B, then shook it for two minutes and it was ready to go. And the reason I chose to paint this camper with Raptor liner is because of how rugged and long lasting it is. And it also looks freaking badass. All right, so we finally got this thing fully lined. Now we're gonna wait about 24 hours so that we can finally put the doors on, the solar panels, and just finish this camper up because it's been about three weeks and I'm freaking exhausted. Once the Raptor liner was dry, I laid a bead of sealant onto the windows before installing them onto the doors. I then installed the locks and the hinges, then screwed the door onto the camper. And I'm not gonna lie, this part felt freaking amazing because this thing was actually starting to look like a camper but the next step was to install the exterior lights and we basically just wired it up, put waterproof sealant in the hole and just screwed it in. The next step was to install the max air fan so we added some level lex roofing adhesive to the bracket that came with the fan then screwed the bracket into the camper and added more adhesive around the border and onto every screw. Then inserted the fan into the bracket and screwed it into place. I then went inside of the camper, wired up the fan, installed the trim piece to make sure it looks good, then turned on the fan to make sure it works. We're also adding a 200 watt solar panel to this camper, so we started by bolting on all the brackets onto the solar panel. We then ran the solar wires through the solar gland, added some adhesive, then screwed it into place. I then brought the solar panel onto the camper roof, connected the wires together, then screwed it into place. Once we finished installing the solar panel, we installed a 6 gallon water tank onto the outside of the camper. And this will supply fresh water to the sink, and the gray water tank will be mounted underneath the sink. We also installed rain guards above both of the side doors and upgraded the rims and tires to something a little bigger because the other ones were just way too small and they couldn't go over 55 miles an hour on the highway and the bigger ones honestly just look better. 
We also installed fenders and a 1500 pound trailer jack with a wheel. We then wired and installed the tail lights, then tested them to make sure they work. And for a finishing touch, we decided to install a Sennheiser soundbar. This will work as a speaker for the camper and also have the ability to connect directly to a projector to give the person purchasing this camper the ultimate sound experience. And this soundbar only pulls about 240 watts, so it should be able to be used for about two or three days without affecting the battery bank. We chose this soundbar because it's an entire surround sound system in a single speaker. But we filled the water tank and did a few last things because it was time to take this camper on its first test drive. So the camper is finally finished up. We have it hooked up to the truck. Now we're going to take it on its first test drive and cross our fingers that it runs good. All right, so we just finished test driving it and it runs really well. Now we're at the Catscale place and uh, we're gonna weigh it up and find out how much it weighs, so let's do it. <laughs> 